pretty far. Can't really afford to put basic lands in the deck. It's all wastelands, fetch lands, and dual lands. So that that card is a potentially a big difference maker for George here. Let's update you guys on the board here at home. George sitting at five life. Doesn't look like he has very many cards in hand at all. Lawrence, five six Tarmogoyf, Delver Delver Secrets not flipped just yet. Sitting at twenty. Twenty is a lot. Tarmogoyf is very very good against blue red decks. Yes, it is. So sacrifice mystery and force go down to four. So this is going to require some real wizardry for George to get out of this game. Let's see what he has planned. Now we do see an updated score here of nine to four. Ah. So okay. Look, twenty is just awfully high. But we get confirmation from our spotter that the light totals are nine to four here between Lawrence and George. Nine still might be much too high. Yeah. We'll find out in a moment. Well, we'll see what George is looking to find here. Price of progress isn't going to kill him all by itself. And Lawrence does have a couple cards in his hand. We're not sure the contents just yet. This is a brainstorm. That's going to resolve. This will allow him to set up the Delver to flip for sure. A Pondery Wasteland and a Misty Rainforest are the cards that are found. Sets the cantrip back. So we still have a ability on the stack here. This is a Snapcaster Mage. That might be on blocking duty here. Or it might not be. Let's see. Prop. Okay, so that's, that's a little... Well, he can chump block out of this turn, potentially, against the Tarmogoyf. Well, the problem is the Pop's going to deal him two. Oh, yeah, you're right. He has a Volcanic, correct? Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, I mean, if he didn't have the Volcanic out there, this would be perfect. The problem here is that he goes down to two. Lawrence takes six. And assuming our light tools are correct, this should just be an attack for lethal in the air. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what it's going to be. Okay, so Lawrence Young is going to win game number one over George Gonos. And a very close one, apparently. Yeah, price of progress, you know, like I just mentioned, very, very good against this bug deck. Yeah, but not quite good enough there. So let's take a look at the bug Delver list, just because we haven't really analyzed this deck. We haven't seen it for a very long time. What's he got going on? It's got Death Rite, Delver, four Goyfs, and two Tomb Stalkers as his pressure. Four Brainstorm, four Ponder, four Days, four Force of Will, four Abrupt Decay, four Him, two Liliana, and then Lance. Okay. So pretty straightforward, pretty lean list. Looking in the sideboard here, we have a copy of Grapdigger's Cage, a Liliana, a Vendelli Click, a Creaming Tar Pit, a Submerge, three Golgari Charms, three Spell Pierce, three Disfigure, one Crozan Grip. I like Spell Pierce and Disfigure in this matchup. Cheap removal is very good. If you can blunt the blue-red Delver's early onslaught of Delver's and Goblin Guides, it makes the game much more manageable. And Spell Pierce is pretty good at containing, of course, all of blue-red Delver's spells, most notably Price of Progress, which is the thing that Lawrence really needs to fight over. George's side, a little bit different from Snyder's deck list. He's got the four Delver's, four Goblin Guides. He only has two Snapcaster Mages, where Andrew had four. And he's got two True Names and the one Grimlava Mancer main. To go on four Pond, excuse me, four Brainstorms, three Ponders, four Days, three Pierce, four Bolt, four Chain Lightning, four Force Will, and three copies of Price to go along with a handful of land, none of which include Wasteland. The sideboard you guys can see there on the screen of two Ensnaring Bridges, two a Relic of Progenus, a Phantasmal Image, a Blue Elemental Blast, two Pyroblast, a Red Blast, two copies of Smash the Reins, two Submerge, and two Surge extractions. The problem here, as you look at that sideboard, is that none of these cards are really a great answer to Tarmogoyf. Yeah, and that's the, the biggest the biggest issue here. I mean, he has Submerge, which is not terrible mm -hmm. if he's backing up with creatures in pressure. Yes. But it could, or if Lawrence gets a little sloppy and uses a fetch land, George can Submerge in response and, and remove it from the game entirely. But unless he's backing up with pressure, Submerge only does so much. Yeah. So, I mean, there are definitely cards that he can bring in here, but, you know, nothing that really stands out to me is, you know, this is a card that's really great in this particular matchup, and I feel really good about boarding it in. Everything seems like it's perfectly reasonable, but nothing is really going to blow you away. I mean, as you mentioned, Submerge is normally really good against these decks, and this matchup, it seems like it's fine, but I'm not excited about it. Right. When I was building Blue-Red Delver List, I was a much, especially if I had Snapcaster Mage, I was actually a much bigger fan of having Dismember in the deck rather than Submerge, because Tarmogoyf is such a headache 
And I understand when you have your good draws where maybe they don't have removal or they stumble a little bit, and Submerge is more powerful than using removal. You're happy to set them back, but if they're punching back against you at all, then it's really critical to be able to remove it entirely. A lot of Tarmogoyf decks, you know, Rug decks especially, have Lightning Bolts, so Dismember you can only go so far with, but against this Bug deck, it would actually be quite good. It would also kill Tombstalker, which yeah. is critical as well. Although Submerge is also good against Tombstalker. This is true. This so. is true. I mean, I, I think we're going to see Submerge come in, as I think it should, um, but it's not something where, you know, I'm going to mulligan for it, or if I have a hand with it, I'm going to immediately keep my hand because it's so good in the particular matchup. I think it's just perfectly acceptable in this match. Yeah, and remember, you know, Lawrence, they, they share deck lists here. Lawrence is aware of Submerge. With some crafty planning, if he gets Underground Seas and casts Deathrite Shaman and tries to generate green mana that way, he can take some wind out of the sails of Submerge, maybe strain it in the hand until he's ready to him it or Liliana it away. So uh, it's possible Lawrence can play around it all together if, it draw, if his draw allows it. Although I really like Relic in this matchup for George too, as it's good against Tarmogoyf and Tombstalker, two of the most challenging cards for him to beat. Again, if you guys are just joining us, quarterfinals of our Legacy Open. We had nine rounds today. We whittled it down to eight final players. I guess we can say seven, unfortunately, for Hayden. Who was, his top eight berth was abrupt. Yes. Abruptly very, ended. Very short-lived for Hayden Betzel as he was dispatched very quickly by our standard open champion, Tyler Wilkerson. Omnitel is waiting to see who it's going to play against. Will it be Chris Janis playing Punishing Jund or Thomas Hake playing Reanimator? That is the question. Again, when we do get updates on that match, we will let you guys know. All that we do know right now is that David Winsauer is up a game over Stephen Mann and Nauseam Tendrils up a game over Blue White Red Delver. And that, that Punishing Jund Reanimator list, if you could pick the two decks in this tournament, you know. On one end of the spectrum, something Tyler would be happy to play against all day. And on the other end, I imagine a matchup he would really like to avoid. It's waiting for him in that other side of, the, of his bracket, waiting for him in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, again, I wouldn't want to play against Reanimator if I'm, if I'm Tyler, just because that deck, even if he does win the matchup, it's going to be a struggle. You know, he's really got to win a tough fight there. There's a lot of the same parallels, you know, of the Elves Omnitel matchup with the Omnitel deck kind of being on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit slower, it's a little bit less explosive. The Reanimator deck actually has more disruption in, in Thoughtseize alongside a Force of Will. Yep. And the Omnitel deck can't beat the best draws of the Reanimator deck because getting a quick Iona into play is just game over. Yeah. So we see both players are going to shuffle up each other's decks here and we'll be ready to go momentarily between Gonos and Mu Young. Bug Tempo decks used to be all the hotness back in the sinkhole snuff out days. I mean, you have to go back, but it's yeah. not the first time you've seen this color combination. No, not at all. I mean, this is something that we saw in round 2008, 2009. Team America, as it was called. Yeah. Uh, some changes since then to what they were, you know, what they were trying to accomplish. Again, no snuff outs. This go around, people have really moved away from that card over the past year. I like a snuff out. You know, it's okay. I value free spells a lot. Uh, I mean, not that Lawrence has. There's a warning being issued here. Not that there's snapper, Snapcaster Mage in the bug deck, but free spells and Snapcaster Mage just really gets me going. Snuff out, Cataxium Probe, you know, whatever. You name it. That's the kind of deck I want to beat, never play. <laughs> I like the challenge because their deck is so good, which is just a, maybe a ridiculous way to think, but I don't know. I like the, yeah. I like the challenge. So we'll be underway here in just a moment, you guys. All right, there's an island, and that's Delver of Secrets for going. Oh, it's a good start for his deck. Arguably the best start. Oh, that's snuff out, and Snapcaster Mage particularly synergized, but I'm in the, fi in the efficiency market. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> it, I mean, it still disgusts me that yeah. you would ever want to do that, but... Looks like we have a dis disfigure in hand, I believe? Yep. Don't see that one a ton. Yeah, and I think we're just going to try to get it out of here. Days could mess this up, but I think it's worth giving it a shot. Good force of will here if you're going, though. So he does have a copy in his hand, but I think it's better just to let that go. Mm -hmm. So take a draw. This is a Scalding Tarn. Sacrifice that. See if he's going to go for basic or underground. 
and it's going to be an underground. The Blue Red Delver deck has this tension between wanting to play around Wasteland in these spots, but also needing lots of different blue sources and red spell sources because it's playing multiple bolts in a turn, multiple cave trips in a turn. And I apologize, Volcanic see not Underground see And there's a Goblin guy. So you can use all of his mana. Attack for two, trigger. That's a daze. Good information to have if you're going to those. No, you have to play around that now. Yeah, Goblin Guide is very often a power in Legacy. People remove lands for their deck for additional cantrips, and information is so valuable. So a daze added to Lawrence's hand. Let's see what else he can find. He's got a little bit of catching up to do. He's got two kind of coming from two different angles here, where Delver is certainly scary because it can flip, but you want to get both those creatures off the board and keep your life a little high so Price of Progress doesn't have a huge effect in this matchup. There's a Wasteland. That's rather unexciting. Well, it depends. He, you know, the Blue-Red Delver deck is often really susceptible to Wasteland. It doesn't play a lot of lands, and again, it's very color mana sensitive. So this, this setup from Lawrence is actually potentially very good, as George may be without the ability to find red mana. Delver's not going to flip. Oh, there's a Relic, a card that you felt would come in. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Lawrence finds this to be days worthy. Yeah. That's a card that can definitely have an impact in this match. Deathrite Shaman, Tarmogoyf, as you mentioned, can control the graveyards. Days is going to occur. Tombstalker as well. Gonna, yeah, Goblin Guy's going to come in, trigger. That's a Wasteland. So that's a hit for Mu Young. But Goblin Guy's going to get two damage across. And Lawrence is going to go down to 16. Lawrence can really take over this game if he can blunt this pressure right now. Yeah. If he has a removal spell or uh, one of his two mana creatures, especially Tarmogoy, if he can really pull ahead on this, in this spot. Yeah, I mean, even a card like Abrupting is actually pretty good right now. Yeah, all he needs to do is basically trade. Yeah. Keep his life total as high as possible and then overtake the game with his more powerful cards. That's a Brainstorm to start. So one is a Brainstorm, two is a Ponder, three is a Tarmogoyf. So finding the big Lurgoyf is good, but he might have to take, you know, maybe five damage on the chin. Yeah. He's definitely looking for a land here. Remember, he found that that wasteland off the off the guide the previous turn, so he could reset that off the brainstorm. Well, it looks like he kept it in hand. So now we're going to remove one of these lands. Volcanic's going to go bye bye. He's going to go disfiguring here. Quick update for you guys here: David Winhauser. Defeat Stephen Mann, two games to zero. Ant is moving on. See a disfigure on the on the guide here, leaving the Delver. Delver again, unable to flip, but George with another Delver. I was a little curious to see Lawrence uses the disfigure on the guide and not the Delver when he has Tarmogoyf in hand. So let's see what his setup is here. Oh, there's a draw, it's a ponder. I am a little confused by that play. He may but be just working towards Tombstalker. Yeah. That might be the plan here. That could be the brick wall. It still feels like on the balance you'd rather have a guide in play that you know you can manipulate and mm -hmm. give you versus, cards. Yeah. Easier to chump block, all the things that you know make you just want to leave that guy out there. Still, this could be a really powerful setup for, for Lawrence here if he's able to get that that Tombstalker into play. Looks like he might start by pondering. So that's what he's going to do. So one, two, and three. And the winner of this match is going to go against Stephen Winsauer, who, again, did win his match over Stephen Mann. The seventh seed moves on, playing at Nauseam Tendrils. I feel like Lawrence is being a little too, too liberal about potentially allowing these Delvers to, take, hit, to flip in. Go over. I agree. He's setting up his hand a little bit here. I think I would have focused more energy on 
just using removal spells. Like that, that turn I would have really liked to cast a Prompt Decay on something potentially. Yeah, just keep a Delver off the board because again, this is a, for all intents and purposes, this, uh, this Blue Red Delver deck is a burn deck. Right. And so these are just acting as walking lava spikes and the rest of the damage is what can get you. So if George does find a red source, not, you know, bolts and chains are on and then things get a lot more scary. George is going to look. It's important that he fits this one. And he does. And that's a big hit. This is going to change the dynamic of this game in a big way because now six is going to come across in the air. And that brainstorm also has the chance to find a red source mm -hmm. too, so. He's going to lead off with the brainstorm. I have to imagine we're, we're dazing this. Yeah, if there's days over there, I think you have to counter it. I think it's much too scary to let this resolve. And he does decide to let that resolve. So two and three among those cards is a Scalding Tarn. That was a really critical Tarn, too. As if he didn't find a land in those top, in those top three, he's basically mm -hmm. brainstorm locked. Tarn both gives him a land that can find a basic mountain if he wants to play around that wasteland and shuffled away the worst of his hand. Yeah. He draws here for Gonos. And Spell Pierce is likely to be good, too, the way this game is sort of pacing itself. Yeah. Tarmogoyf's got some real work to do now, but I think it might be too late for Tarmogoyf to have a huge role in this game. We're going to see. It's certainly not over yet, and Tarmogoyf can close the game out quickly. But whenever your opponent's resolving a Brainstorm, and we saw him find a red mana, it's pretty scary stuff. Two cards are going to go back. And now here's the Tarn. And then pass the turn. And I feel like this is this is shaping up to be one of those games where the control deck, which this is contextually a control deck in this matchup, dies with a lot of cards in their hand. Mm -hmm. There's a Misty. No sense in hanging back, Mr. Tarmogoyf. It's time for him to come play. So here's an attack for five. Gonos is gonna go down to 14. Gonna move a land over there if there is one, which there isn't, because Tarn is in play. It's going to make casting Tombstalker actually pretty tough. Yeah, he's actually... Lawrence is actually getting punished pretty significantly for having a Wasteland in play because mm -hmm. his hand is so color mana intensive. That's going to go down to eight, which is not a great spot to be in. He's going to get a Bayou. And he can cast Tombstalker now and then leave Wasteland available which I think is actually pretty important to do, just because even if you want to be able to play around Price of Progress the best you can. Mm -hmm. So George will shuffle his deck, and then we'll see what's going to happen here. And don't forget, too, this Tomb Stalker that's going to come down due to Delve, it's going to remove some cards for Tarmogoyf, make it a little bit smaller, most likely. Yeah. Not the ideal synergy to have in the same deck, mm -hmm. but, you know... They're basically part of the same theme, which is using your graveyard as a resource. They're from the same set. Yeah. Ridiculous. Tombstalker was definitely the more hyped card upon release. Yeah, I was a big Tombstalker fan back then. I played a lot of Legacy. It's going to swing down to a 4-5. Still being able to leave Wasteland open, which is good. Yep. He has a Days in Hand, too, so he can actually totally blunt a Price of Progress here. Yeah. It does, it does beg the question if Deathrite Shaman should have come in to the attack step, like into, into the red oh, zone. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I think he, he may be ca planning on casting a Brainstorm because this is his last chance to cast it. Mm -hmm. But it's possible the extra point of damage matters, certainly. Force of Will. Going to battle over this Tomb Stalker now. Makes sense. I wonder if this is worth dazing. Well, there's still that Tarn up. Yeah. There's a chance, you know, you daze this. He gets a volcanic. Maybe you, or you can wasteland the tarn. And in response, daze the force of will. Take it to another level. Could get interesting. 
I almost, if I'm really young in this situation, I kind of want to have my wasteland to blow up my own land. If he's playing around Price of Progress, yeah. Yeah. But if that's something that's on his radar. Although in this world, you're getting rid of a wasteland and a, uh, a land in play. So it turns the Price of Progress into only two damage. I understand wanting to be able to get rid of everything. Yeah. So now here's a brainstorm in response. Thumbs up. Wasteland, Tarmogoyf, Verdant. We'll see if Muyung does see the play of Wasteland, your Scalding Tarn, fetching the stack, Daze, your Force of Will, which, as you mentioned, will actually allow him to get two lands out of play for yeah. price. So it's actually going to accomplish the same thing, but it's going to leave you with a Tombstalker in play, which can, in turn, block out Insectile Aberration. So, don't think he saw the interaction, so that's going to resolve. Yeah, now I think the writing's on the wall here. I don't think he's going to be able to win this race mm -hmm. now. Scalding Tarn's going to get sacrificed. You see George is really moving quickly now. Mm -hmm. See if it's basic mountain or volcanic. It's a mountain. And you can see George knows the writing's on the wall here. Yeah. Listen, when you got someone moving that fast, you got to imagine that you're dead. There's a goblin guy that can do it by itself. That's a damage. That's going to do it. So George Gonos is going to win this game over Lawrence Mu Young. We're going to go to game number three between these two players. I think in that game, Lawrence sort of misevaluated what was going on and what role he needed to take in the matchup. I understand wanting to brainstorm and set up your hand and all that kind of stuff, but Lawrence has to get his himself out of the early game and into the mid game where then he can take over with his Tarmogoyfs and his Tomb Stalkers. He died that game with an Abrupt Decay in his hand. Mm -hmm. And there were turns where he just brainstormed and set up his hand a little bit instead of just playing to the board. And I think Lauren needs to reevaluate how he's addressing the matchup. Well, it's all about role assessment, right? You know, who's the aggro deck, who's the control deck? I think it's very clear that George's deck can't play the control deck here. He has to play the aggro deck with cards like Delver and Goblin Guide in his deck. As a result, Lawrence has to just kill those things because every every single point of damage those cards deal makes Lightning Bolt and Price and all the other burn spells in the deck better. If those things don't deal any damage, he's just a bad burn deck then. Correct. He's a burn deck with killable creatures that don't do anything. So you have to fire those Abrupt Decays off immediately, any other removal spells, daze the threats, that sort of thing, so that, you know, when it's time for, you know, George to try to burn you out, he's doing it with you at 15 as opposed to 8. And the other thing to remember is... Once Lawrence has established control of the game, he's used his removal and, and blunt in George's offense, he can actually win the game pretty quickly after that. It's not like he has to worry about George drawing a lot of bolts over a number of turns because Tarmogoyf and Tombstalker end the game so quickly. So get on the board fast, use your removal aggressively to keep your life total high, and then ride Tarmogoyf and Tombstalker to victory. And all the while being mindful of Price of Progress, and I guess in the post-board game, Submerge as well. That's the recipe. Again, if you guys are just joining us, game number three here. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Star City Games Open Series here in Orlando, Florida. At SCG Live, hashtag SCG ORL for the remaining tweets of the evening. We'll be checking them all evening long as we do work our way towards crowning the champion. Again, Tyler Wilkerson trying to do the back-to-back, -back, which Jerry Thompson is the only one who's ever done it. He won his quarterfinals match, defeating Hayden, Be Hayden Betzel, excuse me, with Omnitel. He's going to be going against Thomas Haig. Thomas was able to win with Reanimator over Chris Janis. So Reanimator versus Omnitel will be on one side, and we've got David Winsauer waiting patiently to see who he's going to play the winner of this match between George Gronos and Lawrence Muyung. A combo-heavy elimination rounds. I don't know when the last time it is that we've had three combo decks in the top four of a Legacy Open. I wager it's been a pretty long time, though. We oftentimes see three Delver decks yep. in the top four. That's for sure. Three Esper Blade decks, I'm sure we've seen. Mm -hmm. And again, Lawrence is going to be on the play this game. Let's see if he's happy with his opening seven. He 
says he's going to keep. So George is going to take a look at his hand. We'll see what he finds. Among them, a force of will. Not sure the rest. Got a brainstorm. It's got a lightning bolt. What we got is a mulligan and a quick one. Uh, I like that. He, 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 I mean, he had brainstorm, bolt, force of will, regular land, fetch land. That's a, a hand that I think most players would just not even think twice about. But George knows that he has to find pressure in the matchup. He didn't even think twice about mulliganing. Yeah, he has to be the aggressor. Yeah. Hands that don't do anything get buried by Tarmogoyf way too easily. Yeah. Or a removal spell, or a him, or any number of things. Yeah, he sent that back pretty quick, looking for a creature to get the ball rolling. Don't forget, next weekend, Columbus, Ohio. You excited? Of course. I'm excited. My third weekend in a row, I'm going to be doing four straight shows. Columbus yeah. will be number three. I'm super stoked. Columbus, Ohio next week. How so, far is that from where you grew up? About an hour 45. Okay. Play a lot of PTQs there. Had a lot of friends that went to Ohio State, so I've been around there. Ohio State's about, about 10 minutes away from where the convention center is, where we'll be. So if you guys are in the area, and I know a lot of people, Columbus is kind of a central place for people to go. Expect a really nice attendance there. Should be a really, really fun tournament. Midwestern city, Ohio State, one of the largest Boo. universities in the country. I'm sure we're going to have a pretty big turnout here. Boo. I'm not an Ohio State guy. A Boilermaker? I am a Boilermaker. We kind of hate everyone because we can't beat anyone. Mm -hmm. So by default. Right. But I know Rutgers is coming to join the party. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for this. Yeah. Playing in a real football conference. Mark Herberholtz and I already have some tentative plans to attend next year's Rutgers at Michigan State game. Okay. Which is happening right before Thanksgiving. Well, that should be fun. All right. We are underway here. Underground C in a Delver of Secrets. So maybe Mo Young will be the aggressor this time. You know, you have to imagine that Delver of Secrets is not going to live very long. But you're happy with all those trades. Of and, course. Yeah. Anything that trades one for one after George's mulligan especially his, his burn spells, those are all victories for Lawrence. Just gets him to the stage where he can play Tarmogoyf on a stable board. George with a Delver of his own. Lawrence checking, hitting, a spell pierce. Insect Operation has shown up to the party. Lawrence draws that spell pierce. We'll see what he has to add to the battlefield here momentarily. Secluded Delta brought to the front. So he's got his colors. Attack number three, put George down to 17. Let's see what else Lawrence has on this turn. Here's to have a Pierce and a Tomb Stalker. I'm not sure if he actually has anything that's yeah. castable right now. Looking for more than that. All right, well, he's going to sacrifice Delta, so sounds like he might. He's got a, a Tarmogoy for the Pierce. One of, if not the best cards in this matchup for Lawrence. Oh, I think it's number one. Yeah. Played a lot of burn and a lot of blue-red against these sort of decks, and Tarmogoy is the card that kills you. It's going to be a 1-2 right now. Pretty risky to run it out this turn into the face of a potential lightning bolt. Yeah, bolt or chain's going to get it done. Yeah. But here it is. There is a Tarmogoyf. That, I think that foil Tarmogoyf? Yep. This must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the old one, too. There's your one, too. Bolt's right. going to bolt right now. As if on cue. Yeah. <laughs> In the house. Let's see if George wants to take out the Tarmogoyf. That's a very real question. You might want to say the bolt just to go upstairs. Try to finish the game off quickly and just play as a burn deck. He's got to have a really, really good hand to warrant doing that. See, it looks like he's going to play a Volcanic. Yes. He has a guide in his hand, too. I think he's thinking about potentially just playing Goblin Guy with Spell Pierce back. I like the beatdowns. Save the bolts for the face. I don't know all the cards in Lawrence's hand, but it is kind of appealing. I don't know. You, you're you going to have a lot of chances to stick that Goblin Guide for at least two points of damage. This is your one chance to kill Tarmogoyf with Lightning Bolt. You're not going to have it after this turn. So right. well, He's going to take it. In with Insect Operation, Lawrence going to go down to 16. Pass the turn back. Lawrence on tap is three permanents. He'll add a card to his hand. You see Verdant Catacombs hanging out. We know there's a Spell Pierce over there. May have just drawn another copy of Tarmogoyf. Not too sure, but start with attacking for three. Going is going to go down to 14. Looks like a death ray yeah. challenge. That's a good one, too. There's a Verdant. 
There's a lot of dueling tensions on Lawrence's graveyard with this deck. Deathrite Shaman, Tom Goyf, and Tomb Stalker. Tomb Stalker. Yeah. And George can untap. He'll take a draw step. The Relic of Progenitus. That's a nice one for, for George to pick up here. Again, so Lawrence is really pushing the issue. Is there any merit to maybe holding back with that insight celebration on Lawrence's side to try to trade with something? Yeah, especially with Tomb Stalker in hand. Every trade that you make both gives you more time and puts another card in your graveyard. Yeah. There's an Abrupt Decay revealed with Goblin Guide. You see George is going to write that down because we know that's going to go over to Lawrence's hand. But attack for five here. No good blocks. Lawrence is going to go down to 11. And he's starting to get within range of some burn spells here. Yeah. This is another case. I think Lawrence is playing this game in a very dangerous way. Relic going to show up. That's going to get pierced. George going to sacrifice Misty Rainforest. Take a point. Go down to 13. Looks like he might be piercing back. Going to get a basic island here, it looks like. Now keep in mind, too, and this is something that you mentioned with this deck a little, little bit ago, the mana base is kind of strange because, you know, he searches for a basic island. This means he can't cast two red spells in one turn, so he can't see something like Bolt plus Price or Bolt plus Chain because of the lands that he's searched up. It's also... You know, potentially Lawrence could find Wasteland and cut George off of Red entirely. Uh -huh. But because he has Price of Progress in his deck and because he's playing towards that, putting a second Volcanic Island to play is also dangerous. Because yeah. it might mean that a lethal Price of Progress becomes a draw instead. So there's a lot of conflict of interests going on with the mana base in the blue red deck. So he had a battle over Relic. George won it, so the Relic's in play. Abrupt Decay, of course, coming off the top. And Abrupt Decay can simply take care of that Relic if Mu Young wants to. It seemed like it was important enough to want to take care of. Or it could take care of one of those creatures. And now, Lawrence again has the option of either just racing and using Death Rite to deal damage, or using a removal spell and trying to gain life with Death Rite Shaman. I prefer the second course of action, but it would be in line with the way that Lawrence has played thus far to try to push through as much damage as possible. And too, he can cast Tombstock in this turn. Sacrifice both those fetch lands, go down to nine. Delve. Cost th it would cost three total. There's some risks with that play, too. Yeah. Submerge is backbreaking if you, yeah. if you play it that way. Because that's your whole turn. You're drawing a dead Tombstalker. He's also taking damage, cracking these fetch lands. Yeah, he's going down to nine right now. He's at, well, he's at ten. There's a chance he's going to go down to nine. He has only sacrificed one, so he's going to get an underground sea. He's also playing into the maw of price of progress too. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, Lawrence is trying to end the game pretty quickly here, but he's incurring a lot of risks along the way. Yeah, I mean, he's decided that he is the aggressor in this matchup. So, going to present this over. And again, we're going to see what he wants to do. Because now he's got four cards in the graveyard. So, Tomb Stalker's a little bit short. Remove a land. Okay, so he can actually, yeah, he can, if he removes a land, and he, I like this play by yep. George, he removes, he's going to remove his own land with a relic. And that does work with the way the Deathrite Shaman works. I know this from playing a whole bunch of modern. Deathrite Shaman targets the land. If you remove the land, then it can't actually resolve. So yeah. if, the, if the target goes away, and this happens with a creature or any mode of Deathrite Shaman, this works. Yeah, it is a curious case because almost all these activated powers are as an additional cost. It, tapping it and removing the card is the cost yep. or what have you. This is a, Death Rite Shaman is a, an exception. It does not work the same way as all those cards. You can respond to a Death Rite Shaman activation. Most commonly, you see someone respond with their own Death Rite Shaman, but Relic of Progenitus is another corner case here. So now Verdant Catacombs is going to get sacrificed so that we can cast that uh, Tomb Stalker for four mana. So, yeah, this is... You can see the hesitation with Lawrence here. Yeah. He's going to go down to nine. So now he's in triple bolt range. Price of Progress is an absolute nightmare if that shows up. I believe George still has a... George still has a Ponder in his hand, too. So he gets to look at a lot of cards next yeah. turn. There's a Trop. <laughs> and 
and you can also sacrifice his relic as well. Yeah. So a lot of looks, price of progress, very close to game over, depending on whether or not he attacks with insect or Eberson actually is game over. Submerge, a backbreaking play here. If George brought it in and he's able to find one of his two copies. Here's your delve. So there is your Tomb Stalker. 5-5, five, five, the old brick wall. The question here is, is Delver going to keep attacking? I think the break should be on, but at the same time, it's tough to say because you want to close the game out fast. Yeah, I think actually at, the, at this point, the way that Lawrence has played this game, I think he actually has to do this now. Okay. It's, it's the only thing that lines up with the rest of the lines he's taken so far. Can't switch roles. Here's a ponder. Price of progress is lethal. Submerge is backbreaking. Let's see if he's able to find it. Third card. They're all blue. Is there a submerge among them? There's a force, and then there's two mystery blue cards. I saw a Snapcaster Mage. I did not see the third card. Okay. Lawrence's hand. Shuffle. Just an abrupt decay that George knows about from an earlier Goblin Guide activation. Yep. He knows he's got to get while the getting's good. Try to get this thing over with. Keep in mind that Lawrence is actually winning the game next turn between the Abrupt Decay to kill the Flying Blocker, eight in the air, plus two from the Death Rite Shaman. Sure. So George is aware he's got to find something right now. One mystery card coming from a Ponder. And at this stage, I'm curious to know if, if George has even brought in Submerge. I can see an argument for not because he just needs to be more threat dense and Lawrence can play around it, especially once he knows about it. But it would be mighty good here. Don't think that was of any use. So let's see what George is going to do this turn. He got Relic. Maybe he could blow that and find something of use. He hasn't played land yet this turn. Well, the Relic prevents Deathrite Shaman from killing him mm -hmm. next turn, so he kind of wants to sit on his hands a little bit. He's just going to say go. I'll take a draw. Let's see what Loris draw. It's a him. Let me take a look at the graveyard here. Ponder, Bolt, Spell, Pierce. All targets for death right, Shaman. But Relic can blow that up. Mm -hmm. But now the Relic trick has been unveiled. Well, well one, of them, the one of them has been. Yeah. The other one, not necessarily. <clears throat> Abrupt Decay takes down the Insectile Aberration. And here's the attack for eight in the air that we thought we'd see. And now it's a game of chicken where... George can't activate the Relic. Mm -hmm. or Well, he can, rather, but he's committed to removing it from the game if, if Lawrence responds by activating Death Rite Shaman. So neither player can move. Right. But Lawrence is at the, in the advantageous position. George is going to untap. Looks like he's going to remove an abrupt decay at the end. Yeah, of turn. Lawrence still not respond. Oh, he's going to respond now. Okay, so now this is where we're going to yeah, relic. Now you blow relic. Yeah, so you blow relic, so death rate doesn't happen. And now, if price progress comes off, he's dead. These are some big draws here. Yeah. It's a delver. It's pop or no, I think. I mean, there are redraws with Potter and Brainstorm, but I think it's pop. Actually, pop's a draw. <laughs> That's Nared Mesa. That comes in. See, there's, there's a Force of Will, a Delver, and I think a Land. I think that might be it. Yeah. I think. Maybe that's a, I think that's an Ensnaring Bridge. Now I take it back. It is an Ensnaring Bridge. That's not going to stop the Death Rite Shaman, though. Death Rite Shaman has nothing to remove, though. Yeah, but there's a him in Lawrence's hands. Okay, so then you yeah, can get it done okay. next okay. turn. So 
there is bridge. Each creature, power greater than the number of your cards in your hand, cannot attack. The lands already come into play. Not a huge fan of bringing in and staring bridge in this matchup. Neither am I. You need to be more of a beat down deck, and they have abrupt decay anyway. They're leaving in against you. Yeah, it's just a bit of an identity crisis. I think I don't think it's ever going to work the way that you want it to. Draw a card here. You see the him. Speaking of abrupt decay. That'll uh, that'll get it done too. Yeah, he can also propagate the Insane Bridge now, which is also quite good. Mm -hmm. And attack for Letha. And that is going to do it. So Lawrence Mu Young is going to move on. He defeats George Goanos. Bug Delver is in a crash course with David Winsauer playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils. So congratulations to Lawrence Mu Young. We're going to see more of him later this evening.